Um, there you are. We see you, I think. <clears throat> okay. So, Lexi, uh, looks like you're recording. Is that, I see you. Is that correct? Yes, I just had to log out and then back in. So, we are good to go. Okay, you want me to go ahead and present? Yes, definitely. Or, or we want to do quick introductions? Who's on the call? Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. Um, I okay. guess, so first, welcome everybody. Thank you very much for coming virtually to, to a band meeting. I know we haven't had one in quite some time. Um, just to kind of give you a brief rundown of what today's presentation is really about is um, Bessemer, Eilers, Bojong Town, and The Grove um, all have been working really hard with the city planning department as well as the EPA on trying to develop or um, edit a super fun neighborhood revitalization plan. So th this plan has gotten the blessing from uh, city council to kind of move forward in the adoption process to be formally adopted. So that's the hope of everything. Right, at this point, we're in more of the public participation phase of this process to where we want to get some feedback on the plan. We want to you know, have any other existing ideas put out there so that we can put that into the appendix and then um, just get general support for getting this plan moved along and adopted. Um, with that, I'll just call on each person and kind of have you introduce yourself. Um, you know, and, and I guess as a fun little thing, you know, something that you wish you could be doing over the weekend or what your plans over the weekend are, even though it's only Tuesday. I'm thinking of the weekend already. <laughs> um, so we can go ahead and start with Alan. You want to go ahead? Yeah, my name is Alan Lamberg. I'm a senior planner with the City of Pueblo Department of Planning and Community Development. And what I hope this weekend is to maybe rest up because I was pretty busy last week and the weekend before that. So I'm just going to take it easy and just try to stay healthy. Very good. Um, Ted, how about you? Uh, you know, I went over this plan. I liked it very much. Uh, I think of uh, the discussion we had uh, on this neighborhood, small lots, back when I was on city council. So I'm glad to participate in this meeting. Uh, the desktop computer I have doesn't have a camera, so I'm listening by audio. Uh, this weekend, probably the same as all weekends. Uh, some, I'll spend some time in my office and some time doing yard work. It never ends. Huh? It's good to see you or hear you. Uh, that's good. You know, it keeps me, uh, keeps me well balanced, I guess I would say. Get out into nature, do some yard work, get some physical exercise. It's good to be here. Very good. Good to have you. Um, Lindy. Hi, this is Lindy Webb. Um, I've been living in Bessemer about three years and recently bought a home here and have kind of followed the whole Superfund project just out of personal interest. So I wanted to learn more and hopefully spread the word to my neighbors that they could provide input. Um, I'm not here for representing my job, but I also work for Karen Share Food Bank and participate in the Pueblo Food Project. So I think all of that, um, this information will be really helpful to know. And this weekend I'll be camping out in the forest somewhere. <laughs> Legit, nice. That'll be fun. Um, and last but not least, Renee. I'm Renee Taylor. I work with Lexi on this project. I also work for um, Neighborhood Southern Colorado. I'm also on the food, uh, Pueblo Food Council. And this weekend, I am going to go camping because last weekend I was in Florida. So I need some nature. Florida is not my cup of tea but it was a beautiful wedding and I got back and I'm fine but uh, yeah I'm just gonna go camping with family and friends and just relax for a while nice. I'm jealous guys you guys can be able to go camping they do <laughs> and for those who don't know me my name is Alexis Romero I work at the health department so that's my capacity here but my job's really to just kind of help residents with uh, uh, providing their voice when it comes to community development as well as try to provide any sort of resources I can regarding um, 
like uh, incentives or funding or anything when it comes to built environment projects. So just trying to help the neighborhoods. Um, for me, this weekend, I really just plan on working on yard work too. And then um, just wedding planning. So Brett and I, my fiance and I are just trying to figure out if we're going to be having just a small elopement or if we're going to be trying to have our weddings. So that'll be fun. Um, the only thing that we had on today's agenda for this meeting for band um, is the neighborhood revitalization plan. So we have Alan here to present the information to us. Uh, let us know how community members can be involved within the process. That way we can, like Wendy said, forward those out to our neighbors as well as just try to get as much input as possible. So without further ado, Alan. Thank you, Lexi. And for those of you who are um, on, the, on the phone, um, I'm gonna make this very brief. I, I am providing visuals that will be recorded and then put on our city website and city YouTube. So that way those folks who, who happen to miss this meeting or weren't able to make it can watch this video later and catch up. It also serves to be a good presentation to help people kind of dip their toes in the water when it comes to this plan. Um, so, so bear with me and I'll, and I'll make the best use of all of our time. All right, I'm gonna screen share and go to this uh, presentation slideshow real quick. So uh, this plan was kind of initiated after the Superfund, uh, Superfund designation uh, back in 2015. 2016. So this is one of many, um, this is kind of like the culmination of a lot of discussions and visioning and workshops that have happened in the last few years. And the key difference between this plan and, and discussions and, and visionings and workshops that came before it is that the goal here is to adopt the plan strategies by formal adoption of the City Council of the City of Pueblo. And the reason why that's important is that People living in these neighborhoods, Bessemer, Eilers, and Bojan Town, and the Grove, uh, it's important that when they want to see these strategies and these improvements to their neighborhood, and a lot of improvements are physical, a lot of them are in the what we call the built environment, but uh, it's important that when they want to pursue uh, these strategies, that they're going to find that a lot of these things are going to be paid for by grant funds, whether it's federal, state, or local grants. Um, and also, the, the city of Pueblo has a capital, uh, projects improve, uh, capital improvement projects plan. And so all of those things, uh, when, when the plan such as this is adopted by the city council, that gives it greater weight. So that way, these strategies will have greater weight when they're applying for these improvements. So that's, that's what sets us apart from, from anything else. So just a quick run through. Um, I'm not gonna get into the real nitty gritty, and I'm not going to get into great detail of the strategies. I just want to give people a sense of what the themes are. What the, there's three goals, just a brief uh, overview of the goals, and, um, and maybe, so, but I'm not going to get into too much great detail. I want to leave people, uh, I want to encourage people to get into the detail themselves on this plan. Um, and, and again, the purpose of this presentation is really to ask people to look at this plan and ask your questions, provide comments, uh, provide feedback, and really think about what about this plan is gonna, is gonna be useful for not just me or not just any resident, but really all the future residents in this community. Who are the end users, really, like my boss likes to say? Who are the end users of this uh, community who are gonna use these improvements? Very, not, just, not, just a, not just a personal preference, but what is, what is the greatest good that we can bring to this community? So also keep that in mind too. So briefly, um, let's see, we'll get into my slideshow here. There we go. So um, I'm just, just for those who are not familiar with the geographic area, um, there are three neighborhoods and there's a revitalization area that's related to the Superfund designation of the Colorado Smelter. Superfund designation has to do with the smelter that was uh, operating over 100 years ago, and, and many people are aware that the Superfund designations about arsenic and lead and remediating that in the soils of this area. And so part of the Superfund initiatives is to create a revitalization plan that helps uh, kind of offset the impacts on the community and encourage reinvestment. That's, that's also uh, the point of this plan. There are three themes, and I'm going to just briefly get into those. Um, 
And there's, and there's a lot of exhibits in this plan, by the way. And um, again, I'm not going to go into great detail about the exhibits, but these, these maps and exhibits help support kind of the visualization of, uh, of, of this plan's goals and objectives and strategies. So uh, you'll find in the plan there's a table uh, uh, that talks about three themes, and it talks about all these strategies in fine print, and, and it lists them uh, in terms of what uh, the three goals, the, uh, the overall, I'm sorry, the three themes, then several goals, and then each individual's strategies. Uh, you'll, one key thing that, that's changed since last year is that we took a draft of this plan that the, that the EPA and, and that stakeholders got together in 2018, and we, just, we, we revised it a little bit after conferring with the agencies, the uh, municipal agencies and the, that would be responsible for the implementation of these strategies. We wanted to make sure that every strategy is actionable, that doable, just practically speaking. Uh, we wanted to ref some of them have been refined, reworded, uh, just, just so there's no vagueness behind it. That way it's doable. Uh, you'll find that each strategy is uh, estimated in terms of number of years of potential completion. Some are three years, some are five, some are ten. Don't be intimidated by the long-term strategies because maybe three years from now or five years from now, this community might get back together and revise this plan based on the current reality on the ground. So, there's, so there is some flexibility here as well. Um, and then it just identifies uh, what type of partnership. Would it be public? Would, the, would it be a, a, um, a government organization solely responsible? Or would it be uh, a private entity solely responsible? Or would it be a public-private partnership? So those are just helpful guideposts for us. Um, so, uh, right, let me just, uh, I'm just going to briefly read the three themes just to get you acquainted with them, for those of you who don't know. Um, the first, there's three themes. The first one is connectivity and cultural heritage, and, and that is basically about improving the uh, neighborhoods so that you have, you're recognizing a lot of, uh, uh, there's a lot of businesses, there's, there's these corridors, these streetways, Northern Avenue, um, Santa Fe, Evans, Mesa, uh, all those are either commercial corridors or they're a residential corridor. They all connect, these, these streets connect these neighborhoods together. And there's a lot of businesses associated with them. And a lot of businesses and assets uh, and parks and features that are kind of contribute to the cultural heritage of the community. So that's, these strategies kind of speak to how we can enhance the connectivity, uh, maybe introducing trailways, um, improving streetscapes, so that way it's more pleasant to walk through or bike through. Um, maybe things to slow down traffic as well, um, to connect the neighborhoods through, uh, again, yeah, trailways, um, enhancing bike, bicycle paths, pedestrian paths, maybe, maybe introducing new trailways, particularly a trailway through the Superfund site itself um, uh, that would connect it to uh, connect Bessemer and Eilers over across the Arkansas River to the Grove and then, of course, to the Riverwalk. Um, there's also one project, one idea, concept that's been pursued by the members of the BEGIN work group is what they call a history trail. And that was identified from the Riverwalk down to the Grove, into the Grove, across the Arkansas River, down Santa Fe into Eilers, Bojan Town, then hang, hang a right on Mesa Avenue by, the, by St. Mary's and do drop in and, and then hang a left on, um, in, into Bessemer, perhaps on Elm, or, um, and then maybe continue on from Northern, uh, or maybe continue south through Evans uh, on your way to the Steelworks Museum. So there's all this opportunity to maybe improve the physical environment, the built environment of that streetway uh, so that people can feel comfortable walking or biking, uh, maybe improve it with some physical improvements like um, signpost, wayfinding, uh, interpretive markers, something that could be a, a quick win uh, to connect these neighborhoods together. So that's, so that's kind of an overview of that, that goal, uh, that theme. Uh, the next theme, number two, is thriving neighborhoods. That has a lot to do with um, increasing opportunities uh, for homeowners, um, property owners who are renting homes, um, encourage, encouraging a sense of place, uh, increasing uh, recreational park amenities, 
beautifying the streetscapes, the streets, and, and getting just getting a sense of the place that's otherwise divided by an interstate highway, um, and also repairing and maintaining streets and sidewalks. So again, uh, we have commercial and residential corridors that are identified in the plan. Uh, we also have, um, let's see, oh, let me just get, maybe uh, I don't want to gloss over too much. I know that Ted's on the call and he talked about small lot zoning. When, when Mr. Lopez was on the city council, uh, he recalls there was some discussion about providing um, small land, you know, increasing opportunities for smaller land because our zoning code without getting too much into it, was kind of designed for the 1960s automobile era. But a lot of this area and these historic neighborhoods are small parcels of land. So um, we've done a few things to make it easier uh, for existing small lots. But there's a little more we can do uh, to increase what they call small lot infill development. So that, that's some strategies on our, our horizon from our department that we like to uh, create some legislation uh, to enable it and make it easier Without, so that way, uh, so banks and appraisers don't have to say, well, hold on, are you sure you can build here? We, there's some things we can do to just make it quicker. So that's just an example of that. That's one of our strategies we're looking at. Another thing we're looking at is uh, allowing for accessory dwelling units, you know, ADUs, accessory dwelling units. Uh, we're looking at, on our horizon, making legislation to provide for that. It's just a matter of some standards that would work. Um, and another thing that also discussed in the plan is talking about mixed-use projects. If you look at the commercial corridor on um, Abriendo and, and Evans that heads south to the Steelworks Museum, there's a lot of vacant land that could be opportunities for new mixed-use developments. So that's just an example of some things we're thinking about. Um, but just to emphasize, th th these aren't end-all, be-alls. We want to and a lot of this is reflecting from the preferences and from visioning sessions of people in the neighborhood, your neighbors and fellow citizens. But we still want to hear uh, a little more comments so we make sure we can revise this plan e even further before we take it to the Planning and Zoning Commission for the recommendation. Um, last theme, vibrant commercial. Uh, again, businesses. Um, so goals uh, for, to uh, support the vibrant commercial nature of this, these neighborhoods is to make the area more walkable, um, to support development of neighborhood co-ops, such as food co-ops, local serving markets. Um, I know our, the folks on the call who are interested in, in the food co-op, um, that, that would be interested in that. Um, and also to partner with and maybe encourage the Chambers of Commerce and, and other business type small business um, associations to uh, kind of target this area and, and, and and maybe market and broadcast to this area so that way the merchants who run businesses here might be encouraged to come together, maybe form a merchants association, or maybe encourage them to join the uh, chambers of commerce, whether it's the Latino chamber or the greater chamber um, or the small business associations. Really, because these, a, lot of these, a lot of these businesses could, could benefit from mentorship, um, which could encourage business retention um, and attract new businesses and jobs. And, and you know, increasing the economy of the local area would, be, would go a long way towards improving it. Um, so that's just a brief overview of those three themes. I hope that was brief. Um, but again, this, this, there's a lot, of, uh, lot to look at in here. Um, and, uh, and for those who haven't seen it yet, you can go on to the, our, our website at pueblo.us forward slash uh, CSRP. That stands for Colorado Smelter Revitalization Plan, pueblo.us. Forgeless CSRP. It provides some links and a survey, and um, so yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, I just jumped out of there. Let me just share my screen back to the uh, website. Yeah, this is the website. So if you go on your phone or the or the internet, the site, you'll see this. There's a link right there. You can click on that. It'll open up a PDF. Um, there's a survey you can take. The survey, we definitely, this is, the survey is the easiest way to get comments to us. It will open up a SurveyMonkey app and you can just go right through it and, and just rate your preferences on, on the strategies identified in here. And it, it may seem a little dry at first, but when you think about it, your voice, your comments will contribute to the, you know, the, the substance of this plan, to the future of the neighborhoods. That's, so one voice 
is important. We, we take each voice seriously. So that's, this survey is a great way of doing it. And if you're not available to do this online, we have here in our office at the planning department and at Blowback Gallery, uh, Jeff Medine has, has graciously let, uh, has, has an exhibit space. If you call his, uh, his gallery and make an appointment, he can show you as well. But we have a site there. We have a site here at the planning office on 211 East D Street. We have paper copies. We have large map exhibits. So, and we have printed surveys. So there's all sorts of ways to engage with this project that's accessible to many people. All right. And again, and the, and the plan is full color, um, so it's, it's uh, easy to read. Uh, but, you know, if you have a hard time with, with smaller print, let us know and we can accommodate you. So, so the, the plan is about 12 pages, and, um, and there's all the strategies. There's a lot of different strategies that, that this plan is about. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen there and take it back to everyone else for some discussion about what, what we just talked about. And thanks again for letting me speak. Anybody got questions, comments? Alan. Yes, sir. Uh, what is the uh, adoption process with city council? Just to have meetings like you're doing, uh, get input, or and I, you mentioned the uh, PNZ commission. So what is, the, what is the process to get it to council to approve? And then what entities might be involved? I am glad you asked, Ted, because uh, so I'm going to go back to my share screen as well while I, while I say this. Um, there we go. So on the website, we have a calendar. So again, pubble.us forward slash CSRP. If you scroll down, um, there's a little calendar. And it just talks about the dates. For, the, for this project. Um, in addition, today's meeting, we have a, on Thursday, the planning department's hosting another virtual meeting to support this, this project. But then uh, after July 22nd, uh, is, July 22nd is when, which is about a month from now, we wanna, we wanna receive as many comments as possible. And then after that date, after July 22nd, we're going to take all the comments and revise the plan once more. Uh, because it's our best effort to get a reflection on what people want in the community uh, while balancing it with the practical, um, actionable strategies that the uh, agencies and government authorities have, have, who would implement these things could, could help us with. So um, then we would take the revised plan and submit it to the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, for a formal review. Um, then, uh, that, then at an open public hearing, the Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, I think would be in August, would make a, a formal recommendation to the City Council about adopting the plan. And we hope that the Planning and Zoning Commission would, 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 uh, would be satisfied with the document, that they might give us some more feedback to make some further revisions, possibly. Uh, but we hope that the, the PNZ Commission would be satisfied and make a formal recommendation to the City Council that they adopt it in which case we prepare a, uh, a resolution uh, for the city council. And then in the city council in a uh, public forum would also adopt that formally in the following month. So this could be adopted as early as September, um, as I understand it. So, so and by the, um, therefore by the end of the year, as far as fiscal year goes, grants, you know, if there are grants that open up as far as the, the, the next fiscal year, or grant applications that might need to be uh, submitted in August or November or, or down the line, then you've got something to help support that with. Was that helpful, Ted? Yeah, okay. Yes, that, that was helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ted. Any other comments or questions from either Renee or Ms. Lindy? No, Alan, I've actually gone through the, the whole thing, <laughs> taken the survey, did my part. Um, it looks really good. So I am excited to get this rolling and see where it lands. Thank you. And Ms. Lindy, if you have any questions now or if you prefer to just look at it later, perfectly fine as hopefully, if, hopefully this is clear as to how you can get, get in touch with us, right? 
It is. I'm glad I attended and I'll be looking into it and taking the survey and hopefully having some of my neighbors do that as well. Thank you for spreading the word. Yeah. yeah. And Alan, could you um, kind of tell the group as well as for the recording, what happens if, you know, when people or neighbors start reading the plan and they, and it sparks ideas in their minds to where they're wanting to maybe add some ideas for the future, but it's not necessarily in this plan. What does it look like for, um, what, what happens to that input? Good question. I appreciate you asking that. So let's think farther down um, past the horizon. So here on this, I like to think of things that, you know, we're out like metaphorically, like you're looking down the, you know, at the horizon. So, you know, you're looking, uh, the sun is rising, you can see the earth ahead of you and, and, and ahead of us, we see uh, the plan being revised. We see it going to the Planning and Zoning Commission. We see it being adopted by the City Council. Uh, but beyond that horizon, what do you see? What if, as Lexi says, what if um, anyone in the neighborhoods want to say, hey, I have a good idea that we haven't thought of yet and I want to add that to this plan. So think of it like this, maybe three years from now, um, about, uh, that's a good time to really come together again and get the neighborhood associations to put on their agenda, say, hey, maybe, uh, maybe, it's, a, maybe it's a good time to, to, to really start talking about some new ideas everybody put their heads together, uh, evaluate this plan, evaluate its effect on the community, uh, evaluate what's been done since then, um, what's, what, what have been the quick wins, what have been the projects that we were able to accomplish, um, and then pull everyone's ideas together, probably, you know, whether you're as an individual contacting the planning department or you're, you're an individual in, with your neighborhood association, um, or the consortium that is BEGIN, the Bessemer Islers Grove Improvement Network, and then just say, hey, let's, we want to revise the plan. We have some good ideas. We've resolved that we want to add some more ideas, maybe delete some, and then, then you know, contact us, City Planning Department, and we'll, we'll help you, uh, enable you to do that. And kind of go through the process again, through a, through a public process. Does that answer the question? Yes, thank you. All right. Uh, so, um, and again, I just want to thank everyone for listening in, and I hope this has been helpful. And uh, you can call us at 719-553-2241. That's my direct line. 719-553-2241. That's my direct line. Uh, we are in the office working. Uh, uh, pretty much here. I'm in the office at this time, three days a week. But I am work for those of some of us work from home as well, and we're able to keep up. So uh, we're here to serve the community, and anything we can do to forward this plan and, and be a service, that's that's what we're here for. And I appreciate everyone's time on that. Alan, I have another question. Yes, sir. In, in reading through the plan, it states that uh, council appears to be. Um, willing to look at changes to some of the city uh, systems like infield development mm -hmm. where is land use planning on this process to amend the codes and uh, it, how is regional building involved in this my my reaction would be is that probably one of the biggest barriers from my experience is regional building well, you know what? That's a good idea, Ted. Maybe maybe now's a good time to um, check in with the regional building and invite them to be a stakeholder and um, maybe give us some feedback. Uh, talk about what 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 as far as from their perspective uh, among these strategies, what what you know what where where they might want to identify where there's some hurdles might be and um, and just shine the light so people can can avoid you know, some bumps along the road. So yeah, I'll just, I'll make a note here to get the, to invite the building department to uh, look closely at this, through this process. Okay. Because I also see application 
should the city change their uh, zoning codes to allow infill development, or you use the term um, ADUs, accessory dwelling units, mm -hmm. I think, um, would that be fair to say something like a mother-in-law house? Yeah, same thing. A cottage house, yeah, mother-in-law house, granny house, yes. granny flat. Another yeah. structure, let's say in the backyard of a lot that has uh, quite a distance from the street to the alley. I right. know Salem, Oregon had encouraged a lot of infill development to increase density. Yes. Uh, I came across their plan when I uh, met with a couple council people from there back when I was on city council. Uh, so anyway, th should that wording be changed? I see applicability, especially in the neighborhoods surrounding Central High School. Mm -hmm. Sure. Especially, the other thing that the, especially in the, uh, the junction area, as it's called. Right. And another thing I noticed recently last, last year was that the, um, the city council adopted a, um, an, um, a, I think I couldn't recall if it's an ordinance. I think it's an ordinance. The ordinance uh, amended the, um, the municipal code. There, there's a section in our, in our uh, Pueblo Municipal Code that talks about building regulations. If there's a title for building regulations, it's called Title IV. And there's a chapter uh, pertaining to the International Building Code, and which guides, um, it's just some amendments that the city government has made, um, and that, that guides the building department on, on some things. And one of the amendments they made was to formally adopt the international existing building code. And long story short, that means that for existing buildings, uh, not not residential, but existing non-residential buildings that are that are older, that are not newer, uh, historic or, or otherwise, uh, it provides like a pathway to remodel them uh, using the international existing building code, the IBEC, which which just is an easier pathway uh, if they want to go that way. So that that, that is definitely. Um, an example of something that kind of smooths the way forward when it comes to these things. But I'll definitely talk to the building officials about that too. Thank you. And then on page seven of this 14 page report, uh, under strategies number two, increase home buying and improvement, promote in the middle of the paragraph, promoting a home maintenance program for renters and landlords so, and I noticed that one of the, uh, somewhere in the back, the Southern Colorado Renters Association was mentioned as probably a contact. Uh, so has there been any discussion with the uh, SCRA to get feedback from them on, uh, especially this home maintenance program? It's a good idea. Um, I think we had presumed that when we, in the strategies, if we identify stakeholders or identify parties that would work on these strategies, um, I think some of them, I think we assume that just a natural fit, uh, but, but, but you're, I think you're right. What you're implying is that we should be reaching out to some of these now to get their feedback. So I, I appreciate that very much. I'm, I'm going to note that as well. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, one more thing. And back in the day when Jerry Pacheco was uh, city manager, I think he had put forward a plan to encourage um, maintenance or some kind of program to encourage, and I put that in quotes because it could probably be some sanctions too, to encourage um, maintenance of rental housing, to put the onus on landlords possibly even the tenants to maintain their properties. Cause I know in the uh, older parts in the Y zone in the city, uh, residents that are long time uh, dwellers, one of their complaints or concerns is the fact that uh, transient housing or housing for transient dwellers uh, doesn't seem to be uh, maintained properly. Mm -hmm. mm. Um. I, I know I'm, I'm not super, I'm not very very familiar, but I another thing in the building code, the Title IV building regulations of the Pueblo Municipal Code, there's a chapter that pertains to property maintenance. Is that correct, Ted? 
Uh, yes. Was that, um, is, does that chapter, is that chapter sufficient in, um, with the question to main, maintenance of uh, housing and properties, or, is, are you, or maybe are you suggesting that, that we look, we work with the building department or work with authorities on looking closely at that chapter as, as a strategy in this plan to look closely at that chapter and see what could be done them to perhaps revise it, amend it, to make it more, more effective? Uh, I'm not quite, I don't recall the language that was in the, that proposed plan that Jerry had, but it reminded me again of, I think a, pro, a program that Salem, Oregon had. I think they had maybe one or two individuals that went around and inspected uh, rental housing and they might have some program to probably assist in uh, improving the at least the uh, the external the aesthetics of the property, yeah. maybe even some of the um, as regional building uses life and safety issues on the interior. Mm -hmm. But I think what the citizens want is some program with the, some sort of teeth that would. Um, go a long way or make it easier to, um, again, encourage, and I use that in quotes, landlords to maintain their properties, to bring them up uh, aesthetically to improve the neighborhood or the block they happen to be on. Yeah, I think I understand, yeah. Well, um, I'm, I'm adding that as a, a line item to kind of investigate that um, as, a, as a strategy. Maybe we can articulate uh, what we just talked about for the last few minutes and maybe articulate that as a strategy, talk to some of the agencies that might implement that uh, and then maybe make that a strategy in the plan. So thank you. Any other questions? Any other ideas at the moment or core questions? No, just a comment. I mean, after reading this, I mean, I'm excited, uh, thinking positive that if this were adopted and then grants uh, were obtained, and I think it's mentioned in there that uh, small projects go a long way, are very important yes. to show that something is happening in the neighborhood. And I think it was mentioned, oh, even a long time ago that in, if there's somebody in a block that cleans up their yard, paints their house, then it encourages other neighbors to do the same. So it's like dropping a pebble in a pond. Right. Yeah, so I'm right. excited about this plan. Thank you, Ted. And, and, I, and I just want to offer that for those, if I was a citizen, and I am a citizen of Pueblo, but if I was in this neighborhood, I would want to say, hey, there's so, you know, there's so many strategies. How do we, how do we not get bogged down? Or, you know, wasn't there some other plans like the Bessemer neighborhood plan that came before this? Yes, there was a Bessemer neighborhood plan adopted, formally adopted by the city council um, almost 20 years ago. Um, but if you actually look closely at it, there's a work plan and in that, we actually we looked at this because of all we've been doing. We asked ourselves, what all the work plan strategies that were identified in the Bessemer neighborhood plan, what had been implemented or what had been accomplished or what, you know, and we found that more than half of those were either completed or, or implemented or, or initiated um, or tried out. So in a way, that's a good thing. That's, that's like, that shows progress. And it just shows that things evolve and that this plan uh, is, is kind of carrying forward that energy of the Bessemer plan, but expanding it to the Islers and Bojan Town and the Grove. So, and we're, we're, we're building on this momentum that these communities are, have, are partnering together. And I really, I really believe that if, if we just think quick wins, uh, come together with your neighbors, you know, collaborate with your neighbor associations, uh, and just get in this work, work your community development muscles. Um, then, in the years to come, you'll have a successful program, and you'll be and you'll be on your way to improving your community. And, and you can do that together. All right. Anything else? No, for me, I think that's enough. And, Alan, do you think that you could, what do you, um, just reiterate once more what you feel the next step should be for community residents when it comes to this plan? 
Oh, yeah. To reiterate, yeah, that's good. So in closing, go to Pueblo.us forward slash CSRP, uh, read the plan, fill out the survey. The sur it, it'll only take maybe 10 minutes to fill out the survey. Um, there, there's just multiple choice. You'll, you'll see it's pretty easy. Um, but definitely look at the plan first because you can't fill out the survey unless you look at the plan because it asks questions that pertain to the plan. Um, if you prefer to talk with us, you're welcome to contact, contact us here at the City Planning Department, 211 East D Street. Um, call us if you have questions. Um, you, there's copies available here to look at. So we just want comments. Comments from citizens, comments from residents, business, associate, business owners. We want those comments by July 22nd. Uh, and then we'll take it to the next step uh, for uh, adoption, for the road towards adoption. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you. Awesome, well, we're getting close to time. Um, I know we started a little late, but I want to make sure that everybody um, is accommodated and I can get everyone out by seven. Are there any other final comments by anybody? All right. Well, thanks awesome. Again. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, again. thanks everybody. Um, just as kind of an update, I guess, for band, what I will do is make sure that um, the recording for this meeting, as well as the um, revitalization plan and the link to the CSRP page will be available via email. And then I'll also make sure to post that onto social media just, um, just in case as well. Like Alan said, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me directly and I can get you in contact with Alan or if you have co uh, on the page as well as Alan's contact information too. So um, next thing on the agenda would really be deciding if we wanted to have a band meeting. Um, I feel like the group's a little bit small to make that decision tonight. So what I'll do is I'll put that out to the group once more. More than likely it'll be maybe a hybrid meeting. Some people can come in person, others who are uncomfortable can come um, virtually and uh, we'll try to discuss that via email as well. So, by the so way, I was, at, I was at the Grove meeting uh, on the 11th and it was pretty impressive turnout. So, uh, you know, if, if the band is having, you know, some low turnout or maybe the citizens or residents are kind of holding back, just keep in mind there's, you know, there's opportunities for engagement throughout the neighborhoods. And I think I would encourage you all to work together with each other and, and to really, you know, whether you're in person or, or for the virtual meeting, there's a lot of opportunity to get engaged, get involved. Awesome. Alrighty guys, well, thank you very much for coming. You guys have a good rest of your evening. Enjoy the daylight while we have it. Thank you. Thank you, Lexi. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Thanks for having time. Thanks again, Lexi.